In this one, watch all the wicketkeeping videos I've filmed with professionals and be sure to use the time codes below to scroll through the video as you wish. Good. So this is just a little quick drill to get his hands and his head going. Um, really explosive movements as well. So we're just waking him up, really. Great hands. Two more. Standing up, we've um, a lot of the keepers here. We're trying to get them to to move as it pitches. So you stay still, stay still, stay still. As soon as that ball bounces, get your head in line to wherever it's going to bounce, and then kind of explode with that movement, either going left or right. And that includes staying offside when it goes down leg. As soon as it hits, go. Um, or trying to get as, as close to that as possible, really. So we are the boys are coming along really nicely, and that's what we focus on really on the morning if we're going to do any standing up stuff and that's why we do the tennis ball stuff because it's quite explosive um, and it's, uh, it's a good judge of where their hands are at so if, uh, if they're not catching it cleanly they're probably going hard at it really so it's a good judge there's, there's not, much, uh, it's not much room for error with a tennis ball so that's why we work on it so much. Obviously you want your hands as open as possible ideally with fingers along uh, facing towards the ground everyone's got a preference I'm starting to learn that everyone's got a preference of where their hands kind of uh, hang or lie um, but at the point of catch, if, if you've got the biggest hands possible, thumbs, thumbs out, relaxed shoulders, um, then you'll catch the ball uh, pretty decently. As soon as it hits, hits the deck, you obviously want to come up and explode or move left and right with it, no matter uh, whether it spins or not. So, uh, yeah, do a lot of leg work where it's that explosive power up. And um, yeah, so they try and stay as still as possible until that moment. But the whole winter, given that it wobbles a lot in England, trying to get Ollie's, it's your head and hands in line, isn't it? Getting the feet across making sure he's got energy. I think there's a difference for Ollie that if he stays still when it's wobbling, and then if it's swinging naturally, he'll get his feet moving. So the technical side of that, that's probably what we've worked on uh, the most. But as long as your head and your hands are in line in England, I think you'll be absolutely fine. Let's just start with the basics, as in hands. How should your hands be while catching? Well, uh, it's like normal catching as well. Making sure your fingers are always pointing towards uh, the ground, never towards the ball, because obviously the idea is if, you're, if your fingers are pointing towards the ball, it, there's a very good chance of it popping out. So try and keep your fingers towards the ground or maybe towards the side. And if it's over your chest or whatever, then towards the sky, but never, never towards the ball. Because obviously the other important thing is try and make sure you have the surface area is as big as possible, massive surface area. So make sure your, your little fingers are together, but your thumb, both your thumbs are far apart. So making sure you make creating the biggest surface area possible for you to catch the ball. Secondly, as I mentioned, fingers not towards the ball, towards the ground side or skywards, but never towards the ball. So that goes with our catching. The stance, well, like batting, it's, kind of shoulder width, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Now, this is very, very important. Now, how do you figure out? So just look at yourself when you're, when you're nice and relaxed, what's the, what's the kind of distance between your legs? And that generally would be the distance and stance as well, because anything wide is still acceptable because you have a good, strong base, but anything small or narrow, what your first thing your body will do is try and make sure you get back into a relaxed posture or a relaxed stance. So let's start it from the beginning and be in a relaxed stance. So relaxed, as relaxed as possible. And your hands to the spinners especially can be on the ground. And now I've seen a lot of young kids, they keep their elbows tucked inside their knees. Now, the problem with that, obviously, is when you have your pads on, even if when you don't have your pads on, that's a restriction, right? That would restrict your hands from moving. So make sure your elbows are in front of your pads or your knees so your hands can move freely. There are no restriction in the movement of your hands. So hands in front. Then, very important one. How much do you squat? Do you go all the way down? Well, you can go all the way down, but the most important position in keeping is the squat position, which is your strong position, which is the position of strength where you want to be. 
So bottom line is you can go all the way down, but you still will have to come to this position. So it's up to you whether you want to go down and come to that position while catching or you just start from there. You know, hands on the ground, maybe that strong position, maintain that for longer and, and making sure your elbows are in front of your knees so there's no restriction. So that goes with your stance, soft hands. It's very important to have soft hands because the harder the hands are, chances are it's gonna pop out. So a very good drill to make sure you have soft hands is take a lot of catches with tennis ball. It's very difficult to catch with a tennis ball. If you have hard hands, it will pop out. So take a lot of catches with tennis ball. The other myths uh, that at least I was told and I'm sure a lot of people are still told is to gather in front of your body. So you gather in front of your body. Now the problem with that is when the ball is low, roughly around your knee area, not a problem, right? You can still do that. You can still uh, kind of catch it with your fingers pointing down and you have enough space to give. But when the ball starts bouncing and it goes roughly that high, then your body gets stiff and there is no place for your hands to move. So automatically your hands become stiff because they've got nowhere to go. So your hands are used as shock absorbers, right? But if you have no space, it can't go anywhere. So your hands become stiff and you start popping balls out of your hands and you've got nowhere else to go, you're stuck. So what I would suggest is try and take beside your body, right? Just to one side of your body so that if it bounces, you can twist your body and make sure your hands have enough space to give. If you're stuck there, you're gone. And I struggle with it. I struggle with it and I'm talking from experience especially against bowlers who get a lot of bounce. On pitches, there is bounce. Make sure, more of a reason, that you gather beside your body so your hands can give and you're not stuck there. Right, now the other thing that you all keep has been taught is where should our body weight be in our stance or when we are moving. We are told it should be in the balls of our feet. Now, what exactly is that? Is it like that, going kind of falling over? going on your heel, what is it? Now, obviously not on your heel because then your body weight is be going behind and there is no balance, same. If it's too much in front, you're falling over. It's like batting again. In batting, our body weight's not on the heel, neither are they on our toes. So it's somewhere in between here. And now a good way to find that out is, if you can make uh, understand what I'm saying, is the shoe, the heel of the shoe, the sole of the shoe does not get up from the ground, it's still touching the ground, while my heel of my foot inside the shoe is in the air. Just try that out, try that out and, and see if that makes sense. So bottom line, the, the, uh, the balance or, or rather the body weight would be somewhere in between there, somewhere there, right? Uh, not too much in front, you'll fall over, definitely not on the heel for sure. The other thing is, spoke about soft hands it's important to make sure the length of the catch you're not catching it close to your body because again your hands got nowhere to go you're catching in front of your body you're catching in front you so you have enough room for your gloves to give in to have space for your gloves to kind of move around and not get stuck somewhere so make sure your hands are in front of you you're catching in front of you not right next to your body then you're stuck you got nowhere to go so make sure it's in front, body weight, balls of your feet. Uh, we've heard this n number of times, getting up with the ball. Now the big question is what gets up with the ball? With the bounce of the ball, is it your hand or your hips? Now, okay, so most of the times you'll hear kids saying, my hands get up with the ball, but it's, look at this. Now, if my hands get up with the ball, if the first movement is with my hands, this is what it's gonna be like. My fingers are pointing towards the ball and my hands are in line with my hips or maybe even above. So what happens is one, obviously my fingers are pointing towards the ball which you don't want it to and secondly if it bounces, I've got it on my chest or my helmet, right? And you know, I mean, we do get that. We get that a lot. If the ball bounces, we get head on the chest because we've got no nowhere else to go. But if your hands stay low and the first movement with the ball, with the bounce of the ball, is your hips, then your fingers are pointing towards the ground 
and your hands are always below your hips so that your hands are in front as well. You're not stuck. If it bounces, you can gather. But if your hands are in line with your hips or above your hips, you're stuck. So the first movement or with the bounce, it's your hips. You initiate the movement with your hips so that your hands, they stay along the ground. So they stay along the ground and then you can catch it easily. Then your fingers are pointing towards the ground and you have enough space for your hands to give as well. So what gets up with the bounce? It's your hip. So the start your movement, initiate the movement with your hips, not your hands. Right, or where do you stand, right? Especially to the spinners I'm talking about. Uh, obviously the starting point would be off stump, right? So your left foot in case of a right-hander, right foot in case of a left-hander on the off stump. So this is where you start from, but this is, this is just the starting point. Obviously you need to change your position where you stand or where you start from based on who the bowler is, what line is he bowling? And why I say this is, and the biggest example is we've I've heard and seen a lot of uh, uh, players, as soon as they see the bowler going down the leg or bowling a straightish line, the first reaction is get inside to cover anything which is going down, down the leg or trying to cover anything going down the leg. They want to get closer to that by coming more inwards towards middle stump, starting point. But for me, I think it's the other way around because what you really, really want to see is where the ball has bounced. You want to see the ball bouncing because that will give you a lot of information in terms of how much it's turning, whether it's turning at all or not, the pace off the surface, the bounce off the surface, all those information you'll get when you see the bounce of the ball. But if you're stuck there, and obviously the batter is standing in front of you and you don't get to see the bounce of the ball, you don't have that information, then everything else is guesswork. Now to reduce that, what I would suggest is stand outside off stump so that you can actually see the ball bouncing. So if that means moving a head around, so be it. But make sure, irrespective of where the ball's bouncing, if it's down the leg side or not, you see the bounce of the ball. If you don't see the bounce of the ball, all that information, bounce, pace, turn, you'll miss out on that. And that's something that you don't want to. So starting point, off stump, but then making sure you're in a position, if that means standing outside off stump, that you get to see the ball bouncing. One of the biggest challenges that we keepers have, especially against spin, is balls going down the leg. What do you do? So obviously, uh, we get to see the path to a great extent. So for example, there's a left arm spinner who's bowling round the wicket. He's angling it back in. It's not turning a lot. So you see, you, you see the ball pitching anywhere on that middle leg and you start moving because you think it's going to go there. So you want to move early. But then the problem with that is you haven't seen the bounce of the ball. So I've seen a lot of keepers and I personally used to do that as well. As soon as I saw the line of the ball and I would I would guess that it's going down leg, I would start moving. So obviously what I will try and say here is, and I would suggest is you move late, not early. You stay there, wait for the ball to bounce, and then you move because you've got all the information that you need. But obviously at times what we fear is that we'll be too late, we'll miss out. Trust me, we are taught it's in our muscle memory to catch balls. So don't worry about it, we'll reach there. So if you're worried about not reaching there, we'll reach there, don't worry about it. Even if you start off a little late, and I won't call it late, but <laughs> not starting early rather. So that's something that you've got to keep in mind. Down the leg, wait, wait, wait till you see the bounce and then move. You'll reach, don't worry about you being late, you won't be. The other thing is, something we call the blind spot. So roughly around from the middle stump mm, to let's say uh, another set of stumps on the leg side is the area where we call the blind spot because the reason being the bat is standing there. So that's the area roughly around eight inches you want to avoid. You don't want to stay in that area at all if possible. 
So what you need to do is either you stand on this side so you can see the path of the ball, right? And catch it, like I said, that's our muscle memory. We'll catch it. If we see it, we'll catch it. Problem is if you don't see it, that's when the problem arises, then it's difficult for us to catch it. So just make sure we're not in that blind zone. Either we are on the offside watching the ball for as long as possible, makes it easy. If it's straight down, you can see the whole path, makes it that much more tougher. If it's pitching on middle leg and turning either side. So, but the idea is to make sure you keeping your eyes on the ball, watching it for as long as possible by staying either offside or on the onside, outside that danger spot or the blind spot. So either you're here or you quickly move and you're there. So there is nothing in between. So you don't spend or you rather spend as little time as possible in that blind spot. So try and stay as much as possible on the offside for as long as possible so you can see the path. And then if you have to go down there and you've seen the ball going down there, you try and move as quickly as possible and get on the other side of that blind spot. Footwork. Well, obviously we've heard a lot of people say, a lot of coaches saying, you've got to move a lot. You've got to have good footwork. Yes, you've got to have good footwork, but do we really need to move a lot? Because what happens is when we are moving, a couple of things happen. There are times when we are not in the right balance because we are moving, our heads are moving. And with our heads moving, that would mean our cameras, which are our eyes, they are moving as well. So the idea is to move, move well, but not move a lot. Try and be as stable as possible and move as less as possible, right? So if you're there and if the ball's on the middle stump, you don't have to move here. You can make sure you're nice and stable, your head's not moving, your hands are. Right? Because like I said, before if you can see the ball you'll catch the ball but if you're moving and you can't really your cameras are moving your eyes are moving chances are you will fumble it so footwork yes it's important you've got to have a good quick footwork but you might not need to move a lot the less you move the better it is well that's one of the other myths according to me now with footwork as i mentioned it's important uh, it's necessary but the couple of things you got to keep in mind. One is when you're moving, just make sure your head's not bobbing. So you're not going, moving like that. You're not jumping. You're more like sashing. So make sure your head is not going up and down. And the reason being very simple, again, your eyes, you don't want your eyes to move up and down. So you make sure you get the right speed, the, the depth perception, everything is fine. So making sure your eye line is as stable as possible when you're moving, even for spinners. You know, you try and keeping your head as still as possible, hands as low as possible, you know, when you're moving. Because a lot of times I've seen keepers, especially when they're going down leg side, they get up, they move, and if it's down, they go down. So idea is when you're moving, making sure your hands are still down. Your hands are still down, right? It's not moving, getting up and then moving, but it is getting up with your hips, your hands still stays low and then you move with your hands low, right? So that's the other thing. Footwork, as in in terms of foot. A lot of times I've seen kids, they move with a heel, with a body weight on the heel. So the first landing is on the heel, right? So just make sure we're still on the balls of our feet, right? We are not moving like this. And this happens more against quick bowlers, but even against quick bowlers or spinners, just make sure your movement you're still, while you're moving, you're still on the balls of your feet, not on the heel. So when you're moving, make sure the first point of impact is not heel, but still the balls of your feet. So you're still moving like that and not like, right? It's not heel toe, but it's still balls of the feet right through the movement. Right, obviously as far as practicing keeping is concerned, there are tons and tons of drills, but bottom line, and the basic thing is you've got to catch as many balls as possible. Just keep catching all the time. Whether at home, take a tennis ball, you're out with friends, whatever it is, just keep catching. So get used to it, used to catching balls. And I said this before, don't worry. If you see the ball, you'll catch it. So make it your second habit. You see anything round, moving around, you're catching it, right? So as far as drills are concerned, there are tons and tons of them for different reasons, for different things. But the basic is, take as many catches as possible. Before a day's play, you're just warming up, 
as a keeper, what kind of things are you generally working on before you dive into the day's play? Yeah, I guess um, for me at the start, just trying to get my body moving. So we always start off with a bit of a warm up, um, just opening up my hips, things like that to allow me, obviously when I'm up to the wickets and I'm standing back, um, just trying to move laterally as much as I can and open up for when I'm up to the wickets, being able to rotate my body um, for when the ball's rising and things like that. So I always start off with a bit of a warm up. And then from there, um, generally speaking, I'll, I'll just see what the bowlers are doing. So I'll try and keep to the bowlers as much as I can because just seeing the, um, I guess, the changes in the environments and things like that and how the ball's reacting off the wickets or off the block in this case. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I, I aim to start with. And then I might do a few basic things around. I might do, um, I guess, a little bit off the catch it board. I might do some off the face just to start. And then we normally go off with the, with the coach, do a few knickers things like that just to get myself going at the start and then I'll just make an assessment depending on whether we're batting or bowling around what I do from there. In terms of like standing up to a spinner, does it differentiate in terms of your stance in comparison to um, catching to a quick? Yeah, so I've got a, a couple of things that I kind of try and do when I'm, when I'm standing up to the stump. So I mean the main thing is just trying to stay as low as possible. I think I found, especially on these like kind of warm up wickets, they're a little bit lower. So I'm just trying to get myself as low as possible and then be able to be as loose as I can, I can be and able to come up with the rise of the bounce. There's the ball every now and then that pops up. So if I can be as, as light and, and loose in my arms as possible to be able to rise with that, um, that's what I try to do. So I start off with trying to stay as low as possible. And then the main thing, obviously, is just watching the ball. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, watching the ball, but then just being able to be as loose as you can to be able to react and then just mainly thinking about doing some, a bit of brilliance, so whether that's a leg side take or whether that's just a little nick or something like that, just always being prepared for those things. In terms of balance, whether you're standing up or uh, back to a, a quick, is it all about having balance so you can like go both ways? Yeah, I think be? so. I mean, my main focus is generally on just trying to keep my weight forward a little bit, and that starts with kind of keeping myself nice and low. Um, so that, that obviously that can vary depending on the wicket, depending on the bounce of the wicket. If it's a bit more of a bouncy wicket, I might just start a little bit higher, um, know that I can go down from around my knee height if I need to, but then might have to rise. But if, yeah, if it's a low wicket, then I'll try and focus on keeping my weight forward as much as possible, because if, as soon as you start going from that position and going back, then you're nice and hard, and that's not really what you want to be. Um, so just trying to be as loose as I can when I'm up to the stumps, coming up, almost like lifting up a little bit on my butt first, and then it allows me to keep my weight forward. And normally getting yourself in trouble when you do come up on your heels. So that's something, just being on my toes, keeping my weight forward, just nice and simple like that. That allows me to have that balance. In terms of the way you catch the ball, do you have ways, is it up, down? Do you have any preferences? I think generally speaking, if I'm standing up to the wickets, I'll um, be having my fingers pointing down to the ground. Um, and then I, I guess I ride across the ground. So whether that's down the leg side, through there, offside through there. Um, but then obviously when I go back, that's where um, maybe if the ball's moving a bit more, I might try and drop down a little bit lower to rise with the ball, fingers pointing up. And last one, what's your best tip for a young keeper? I think the most important thing is to watch the ball. That's the obvious thing. Watch the ball and watch it all the way into your gloves. I think sometimes we can watch it to about this distance and then we kind of back off a little bit. So just trying to watch it all the way in. Uh, having wider targets as possible. Um, when you're catching the ball and then just keeping your head in line. So there are three things that I'd, I'd focus on is number one when you're training and then from there on you can worry about things like footwork and things as the training progresses. So first drill we're going to do is a tennis ball, tennis racket. And Neil's going to kindly hit some, some tennis balls uh, and all we're going to do here is he's going to hit uh, the tennis ball, just vary the length uh, and the lines. Uh, our focus here, a big catch and error, a nice strong base. Um, you know, just moving with a line of the ball and just getting a nice, real lip, uh, nice rhythm uh, and staying really nice and relaxed. Uh, obviously, with a tennis ball, if you're not, the ball will bounce out. So, second drill we're going to do is with a crazy catch. Uh, Neil's going to be behind and he's just going to throw some balls. Uh, and here, just focus on reactions, stay nice and uh, relaxed, nice and aggressive with our mindset, big catching area, and just reacting to wherever the ball goes. Third drill we're going to go to is going to use the catch it ramp. Uh, Neil's going to feed some of the balls. Uh, and here, again, nice strong base, 
nice big catching area, obviously with a catcher ramp. It's got all the crazy little humps and bumps about it. So uh, here we're going to have a bit of a, a play around. And then one of my sort of signature drills is five on the spin, uh, quick fire, catch and drop, uh, which basically take all the tension away from my uh, hands and arms uh, and just nice and relaxed with our mindset and just let the body go. Big three things for me there are big catching area, strong base, uh, and then obviously reacting to whatever the ball um, goes. Uh, for, you know, for young kids, these are really good to keep developing reactions, like an aggressive mindset. And as I said, you know, big catching area, big strong base. Uh, and then moving real quick. The Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Josh Nappett, former Worcester first class keeper. He's going to give us some wicket keeping tips, drills for all. Josh, take it away. Brilliant. So, what I want to do is where there's a lot of information about batting and bowling, there's a lot less information around wicket keeping. So, I want to just give three or four points for stood up, three or four points for stood back a couple of really basic drills that young wicket keepers can do that's going to help them improve their, their skills. So first of all, the stance. So if we have a quick look at some basic technique for stance, we're looking to be far enough away from the stumps that when we go into our squat and when we go into our, our catch that we're not breaking the front line. So I'm going to be around about here where I squat down and my hands just rest behind the stumps. Remember that any part of your glove or equipment passing the line, uh, passing the bowling crease line when the ball is in play it becomes a no ball. So, for me, from a technical perspective, whether your feet are close or wide in your stance, you want your head nice and tight to the line of the stumps but still be able to see the ball. Our squat position or our stance or our crouch, whatever you call it, is effectively a position of rest. This is the position that we're in as the bowler is running up. This isn't necessarily a position to move from. So if, the bowl, if you're comfortable taking a squat position, then you can do that. However, you look at a lot of keepers nowadays, they tend to be a bit wider and their squat is a little bit more like this. This squat position is, is a harder one to maintain, but if you're strong and fit, it's definitely a, a positive position to be in. This squat slash resting position is also a very dynamic one for which we can move from. So from here I can power to my right, to my left, I can stay low to catch low balls and I can stand up or rotate to put my hands in the best position to catch the ball. So what we're going to look to demonstrate here is just how we would take a really normal outside off good length delivery, how we would take a ball that's slightly wider and how we would take a ball that would be slightly higher. So first of all, we're into our stance, we're into our set. Okay, so from here I'm going to look to just to sit up slightly just before the ball's let go of, because that's going to be a position that I'm going to power out of to take the rest of my catch. What I'm looking to do is to have my hands in the best position to catch it. So I'm probably going to have to move my body sometimes to allow myself to catch it as straight underneath my chest as possible. As soon as I start to go slightly wider, I'm on the edge of being in control. And sometimes it's a bit harder to present my full face of the glove to the ball to catch. So that one's a really good example of when it's a bit wider. That ball's kind of belly button height, nice and wide. I couldn't have just thrown my gloves there without moving my body, because I would have compromised my catching position. By pushing my weight to the ball, turning ever so slightly, it's allowed me to present really good hands to the ball. So I can catch it, and from here, I've still got my left foot nice and close to the stumps. If I need it to come back for the stumping, then I can do. When that ball is wider, I'm going to try and take my body weight towards the ball. Sometimes I've got to rotate my shoulders and hips to allow myself to keep in a catching position. If my shoulders and hips stay square, I'm going to get a bit restricted and a bit. It's going to be a bit uncomfortable. I might catch some balls, but I'm going to be in a lot more control if I open up and allow that access to catch it in a powerful position. So a really common question. How do you take balls down the leg side? For me, there are two things we're looking to do. First of all, get as much information as the ball, travel, with the ball traveling down the wicket as we can do. 
with our head having an undisrupted view. So what that means is keeping our head on the offside, watching that ball and getting as much information as we can do before the ball bounces. Then as at the very last minute, when you've gathered all the information you need to gather to know roughly where that ball is going to be, then we want to power across to that line. The way that we look to do that from a technical position is our inside foot, so the foot that's nearest to the stumps, is going to take our, our body and our hands. And then I'm going to click my feet across. I'm going to end up down the leg side to catch the ball with a better sight to take it back to the stumps. So a final way of training and developing our skills will be things like these catch it ramps. Add some challenge, add some pressure and some natural variation that puts you as a training wicketkeeper in a better position. Okay, so all we're going to look at here to finish off is a couple of methods for standing back. There's lots of different talk about different ways of doing this, but here is a couple of pointers from a technical position that might be important for you. First of all, I want to get my hands in the best position to catch a normal ball. So the way I do that is by judging how far back I need to stand. So the first thing is a good length ball on the wicket that you're playing on that day should be coming to around about knee to mid thigh height. Finally, the other reason for our position being so important is that governs where our slip fielders stand. So if I'm too far back, my slips are too far back, the edges fall short. So now we know how far back to stand. Where we stand with our line is again, the next important part of setting our stance. We want to think at where the bowler is aiming the ball, what type of delivery would they normally bowl, and where would that ball normally finish off. So what you're looking for there is for your hands and your head to be in line for the majority of balls you catch. If it's slightly wider and I can't physically get my head onto line, or if it's a bit high and if my head was there I get cramped, I want to try and get my head to the best line of that ball. If I need a bit of space to rotate, fine, but otherwise I want to get my middle of my body to the ball the best I can. Again, everyone will have their own preference of the way they catch, whether they're happy reverse cupping uh, a, a lower delivery or whether they try to turn their hands more frequently. Some people prefer to catch the ball on the inside of their body, some people more on the midline of their body, and some people will prefer to catch it. That's your preference. Find what way works best for you in not only the majority of deliveries, but also when that outside edge and that challenge gets presented. You may have noticed that my stance and my setup position is slightly different for being stood back than it was when we were up at the stumps a few moments ago. The reason why is I don't need to take a stumping. Quite simply, when I'm up to the stumps, the balls are going to be a lot lower, I have a lot less time, and I don't have to come back to the stumps. So all I look to do, again from a personal perspective, is we're looking to be powerful, we're looking to be dynamic, but we can have a lot more flow and freedom in our catch. So our setup position is going to put me in a powerful position from the very beginning. I don't have to be in a resting position, I can be a bit more upright. You look at someone like Quinton de Kock, he spends a lot more time upright. He knows that his role is a bit more about diving. He knows that his role as a, as a wicketkeeper stood back is he has a lot more time to move. Other wicket keepers may get into a set position, a resting position that's somewhere like this where their hips are slightly lower. So from this position here, my rhythm, my sequence would be just to touch the floor to make sure I'm in the same position every time. If I don't touch the floor, then sometimes I might be lazy, and be a bit more upright. Other times I may get a bit too into it and get a bit too low and a bit too stuck. So by just touching the floor, I know where my body is. I know where my feeling needs to be. And from here, I'm in a powerful position to move right and left. Just on the pitch at lunch, and Mohammed Rizwan is just warming up with his keeping. Let's just try and see if we can get a bit of a close up.
comes to like feet position, what are you actually working on in this drill? Uh, so first of all, obviously my setup, because you're obviously a left hand hitter, so I, I try and have my left foot uh, on off stump. Like I said, my, my, my base is probably a little bit wider than most people's, but that's what, what I find works for me, is real comfort. Uh, and then obviously, depending upon where you're hitting the ball, line and length, you know, first and foremost, like I said, I'm trying to concentrate on a nice big catching area, um, obviously, and then just rising with the ball and just being in a nice strong position where I can, uh, I can move. So for example, if you hit a few, maybe just a bit wider here, obviously that's bounced a little bit. So just getting in position where I can get my hips out of the way. Um, but yeah, just trying to, so the, this for me is, is one of the keys where you've hit a ball a little bit wider where I see a lot with the young kids is actually to just go with their hands and their head's nowhere near the ball. So for me, grooving, getting that big steps and my head, hands and feet and now covering the line of the ball. So if that ball gets edged, then I'm in a great position to catch it. I'm in a nice strong base. I've moved my head, hands and feet uh, behind the line of the ball. Um, but as I say, you know, I see a lot of kids, what they'll end up doing, if you hit it again, is end up doing that. Where the head's nowhere near the line of the ball, the foot's gone back and the leg straightens. So just for me, just really grooving all these different movements, which I've sort of, like I said to you, refined over a long period of time. And in cricket, a lot said when you're batting about head position, is it the same with keeping? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely crucial. Um, you see with that one, ball's a little bit fuller, being able to get that big step across, head, hands, right behind the line of the ball. And um, you know, just this for me is just, is the ultimate drill because you can hit the ball wherever I want. You know, and I've just got to react and, and being in a really good position. And when you say rising with the ball, for a young kid perhaps wanting to get into keeping, can you explain that a little bit more? So yeah, it's just obviously staying down until the ball bounces. Um, you know, you see a lot of young kids who want to keep wicket, but the first thing they do is before you hit the ball, they come up. Then look at the position I'm in. My legs are straight, my head's back, my hands are not in a great position. So what we want to do is stay down for as long as we can and then come up when the ball bounces, uh, you know, stay in a nice strong position. My head's over the ball, nice big catching area. You know, my hands are nice, nice and relaxed. So there you go, nice awkward ball. Hope I made that lucky. Easy. Oh, what about when you're blindsided down the leg side? Any tips? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you know, when the batter stood here, it makes things very, very tricky. Uh, you know, you see a lot with young kids, the first thing they do, they move their head and feet. And I always say, if you put a batter there, can you see? And they say, well, no. So I always ask, what's the first part of the body that moves down the leg side? And they always say, foot and head. So if you want to take my foot and head, again, I've lost, lost sight of the ball. So the first thing that moves is our hand. So, so our hands go first and then our body moves after. I'm going to go through some uh, technical wicket keeping points here. The first one I want to talk about really is posture. Now posture is really important across the board where any, any kind of uh, discipline within cricket really is important that our posture is in, uh, in good alignment, but especially with wicket keeping. And the reason being is that we need to be able to see the ball, but also get into a good low position as well. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. So a lot of people think that wicket keepers actually get into a squat position when they're keeping. But actually what happens when we're squatting is the weight is going through our heels. Now that's not ideal because obviously if we're leaning back, we're not particularly dynamic in moving forwards and moving from side to side. Okay, so I think that it's more of a deadlift position. Okay, so we are more upright. We're trying to keep our chest up. So you can see here, that's more of a kind of deadlift position as it is a squat, all right? The reason for this is that we, we need to make sure that our hamstrings are really nice and strong and nice and uh, stable as we get into this low position with our chest up so that we can look forwards. The reason I use the, the terminology of posture is because it is important that our shoulders are back. Now, we all understand what posture, uh, or hopefully we all understand what posture is with regards to getting our shoulders back in just the position that our body is in. So as you can see, if my shoulders roll forwards as I go down here, my head starts to look down. If I get my shoulders back and my chest up, I can look forwards whilst I'm keeping. 
Okay, so that'd be the first thing. Now, with, um, with, with regards to the depth, we are looking to get nice and low to the ground. We want our hands on the ground the whole time. A lot of the keepers that I work with, I try and get them to actually get into a position where they can touch the ground with their whole hand. All right, obviously we don't do that when we're keeping, but we wanna be in this position. All right, now, as you can see, that's more of a bent over position there as it is sitting back into a squat. Another important element of wicket keeping uh, that often gets discussed is coming up with the ball. Now that makes it even more important, just going back to the posture side of it, that we are able to see the ball and get into a nice low position. Personally, what I used to do was get down into a nice deep position here. As I said before, my chest is up. Now coming up with the ball is basically trying to um, figure out, obviously early, pick the line and pick where the ball's about to bounce. Now what I used to do was I used to drag my hands backwards as I was doing that. One of the things I see a lot of keepers do um, at the moment is they try and meet the ball, but I think it's quite important to actually be reactive to the ball as, as opposed to trying to, uh, trying to go towards it. All right, so what I would do is I would see the ball bounce and then from there I would pick the line and I would look to drag my hands up. It's really important that the hands are nice and low starting from the floor. If your hands only need to go in one direction, that is much, much better. If your hands are in the middle here, okay, and, and you're not really picking where the ball's bouncing, then we, can e we either need to go up or down. Take some complexity out of it, keep your hands on the floor, so you've only got one way to go. So you see I'm dragging my hands here, and I'm looking to pick where the ball's bouncing, and then I'm dragging, and I'm coming up with the ball there. Uh, the, another important element is obviously the catching area, so how big and how wide you get your hands to catch the ball. Now this is something that gets taught to kids um, throughout their progression, but it doesn't stop there. I mean, even when I was playing professional cricket, it was really important that I had my hands as wide as possible. I mean, it makes sense really, doesn't it? The bigger the catching area, the easier it is you're going to find to A, get in line with the ball and give yourself that target, um, and it just means that you're going to get hit on the fingers uh, slightly less. So, so what I used to do was, I mean, I did used to cross my little fingers here. Um, you don't necessarily have to, but I do feel that it gives you a little bit more stability when the ball goes in. And I would just force those thumbs out, get my elbows tucked in, and I'd be nice, nice and wide here. Okay, as I said in one of, the, uh, one of the other videos, it was important to be nice and low with my hands open the whole time. You don't have to have, have, to have them open from the word go. I mean, I see a lot of keepers that actually start like this. I used to relax a little bit more and I'd kind of have my hands closed or whatever I wanted. But as soon as the ball started to come down, bang, I'd get them open as wide as I can and I'd try and use it as a target to track the ball. Yeah. Right, now that we've got that large catching area, what, um, what I want to talk about now is at what depth do we catch the ball. So if I stand side on from here, now we see this a lot in um, Australia and South Africa and other parts of the world where you see keepers that try and catch the ball out in front of them. Okay, now I'm not going to completely dispel that as a, as a technique, it's obviously valid. Um, but you see a lot of wicket keepers in, in the UK in particular look to catch the ball a little bit deeper, okay? Because we get a little bit of wobble, the ball dies on us a little bit, so it's quite difficult to get forwards. So I used to catch the ball nice and deep, literally as, as, um, as late as I could, almost behind my head, catching the ball in here. All right, if the ball was to the side, instead of looking to catch it from there, as you can see from this side profile, I'd be looking to get myself into a shape where I was catching it back here. Give yourself as much time as you can to see the ball and react to the ball by getting, getting into these deeper positions, catching the ball nice and late. Okay, quite simply, the head is the heaviest part of the body, all right? So where the head goes, the body goes. So it's quite important when we're tracking the line of the ball as a wicket keeper, that our head and our hands and our shoulders start to line up, okay? So what we don't wanna be doing is, is leaning away from it too much, okay? Sometimes we may need to do that if the ball bounces on us, we need to get our head out of the way. But generally speaking, if we've got time and we're trying to pick the ball up early, we're looking to go with the, with the, with the torso and with the head and get in line here, okay? So if we, if we don't have time and we just need to react, we go with the head, we catch there. If we've got a little bit more time, the batsman's left it, then we might be able to shuffle here and give ourselves that little bit of space to move sideways. All right, but fundamentally, as I said, the head is the heaviest part of the body and where it goes, the body follows. A lot of cricket movements are micro movements. 
all right? It's, they're, not, they're not big, gross movements. Obviously, there are stages where we need to dive and we need to make these big, big movements. But if we are, um, the better we get and the better our technique is, actually, they're smaller movements. So once we get into shape, where our hands are here, you'll see that it might just be a case of moving ever so slightly and catching the ball. Just a little bit here, a little bit. Certainly standing up. If you're standing up to a seamer, bang, it's just there, bang. It could be a nice, small, quick, concise movement. So with that, it's important that we are strong isometrically, okay? So I don't want to bamboo bamboozle you with too many words, but isometric strength basically means that you can hold a position for a long period of time without wobbling, without losing that technique. As you can see, I can hold myself in this, this position and I could stay there all day. I used to have to stay there all day, all right? And then from here, it could be just as simple as micro movements there and to there. And I'm just being nice and strong, nice and deep, and using those muscles to hold me in place for a longish period of time.